way you can impute prompts. Like we said, a prompt determines what's going to be generated by the AI model. We're going to try to enter a prompt and be as descriptive as possible. The more descriptive we are, the better the quality of the image and the better the generation. So we're going to enter a bit more detail, a puppy play in the dirt, grass, and then we'll click generate. It's going to take a couple seconds depending on how fast or how slow your PC is. For me, it's going to take about a minute or less than a minute. And at the end of it, I should have an image on the lower hand of my screen. So we did get a puppy and it looks a little bit realistic. Most people are going to understand that this is a puppy. It looks more like um, a puppy. You could tell that it's not so real, but the more detail we have, the better our image. So we're going to make a little change, try to generate it and see what it looks like. It's going to take a couple more seconds. And at the end of the day, I'm running this on a Mac, so it's slightly slow. If you have a GPU, that's going to be way, way faster and the performance is going to be better. And as we can see from the preview, this looks a little bit more realistic. We can do better by adding more prompts and all of that. I'm going to go over explaining what the different fields does. We already know the prompt. The negative prompt are things we don't want to add into all this. The menu there lets us select whatever model we want to work with. And then in generation, we can select the different sampling methods as the case might be. The sampling steps tells us how many times we want to repeat the cycle. The width explains how big or small we want this to be. For CFG, that's classifier guidance, we want to say how much autonomy this has. And for seed, that determines how random our image is going to be. So if we look at this image, we're going to see that it has a seed. And if we repeat that seed, we're going to get this particular image every single time, assuming all the settings are the same. The next thing is the batch size, which determines how many images it's going to create in a simple batch. And for batch count, we're going to say how many batches it's going to generate. So for now, we have those at one, one. We're going to edit our shell script. We're going to go to the line where it says command line arguments, remove uncomment it, and we're going to add the dash dash API command. That should be enough to get us running if we have a GPU. But because we don't have a GPU, we need to add another command that lets us keep the CUDA test. GPUs are normally referred to as CUDA devices. So adding skip CUDA test is going to tell skip touch CUDA test is going to tell PyTorch to not check that we have CUDA enabled or we have a GPU. And this is going to have everything running. All we do next is we go ahead, save the file, and then we run this shell script again. Once we run this shell script, we're going to see it output a bunch of things. So it's going to tell us the arguments it's passing. It's going to start up the environment. And then once it starts up, as usual, it's going to open up the UI. And we're going to see everything loaded just as before. The only difference is that we're able to navigate to the docs. And we're going to see that it has a fast API documentation that tells us everything we need to know about the API endpoints that are available. The most important API that we're interested in is the slash SDAPI v1 text to image. It has a bunch of parameters that we can pass in. For now, we're not interested in every parameter as we're going to only pick what's important for us and we're going to delete the ones that we don't need. We're only going to use what we need. So for prompt, we're going to enter a simple prompt. We're going to say green sapling growing out of the ground, mud, grass, dirt, high quality, and whatnot. And this is just to make our image more realistic. We don't need styles, so we're going to remove that. For the seed, we're going to leave that in minus one. That works. And then sub seed, seed strength, and all of that, we're going to take out. For the sampler name, we used DPM previously. 
So we're going to repeat the same thing and add dpm plus plus, and that's going to be 2m caras. If you're in doubt, you could go to the UI, look at exactly what's there and type that in at the same on the same field and you should get typically the same thing. The batch size, we're going to leave the same.